Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. So today I'm going to be filming my four star reviews of 2017 part one. Um, I have 42 four star reviews uh, books that I read in 2017. So today I'm going to be talking about 21 of those books. So this might be a little bit of a long one, but not as long as if I'd done all 42 in one video. So yeah, so let's get started. So the first book that I am going to talk about today is Divergent by Veronica Roth, which is the first book in the Divergent trilogy. Um, I've actually only read the first one out of this trilogy, so I don't know anything else that happens. And in fact, I've never seen the films either. Um, I kind of didn't watch the films because I wanted to watch the... I'll read the books first. Um, and I do own both insurgent and allegiant so i'm going to read them hopefully this year um but i just haven't got to them yet to be honest with you um but i gave divergent a four star because i really did enjoy it i didn't think that it was a lot of the time i read um dystopian books and i find them to be quite generic because i think maybe because i've read so many of them i feel like it's already been done before but to be honest with you i didn't feel like this with divergent i think it brought something different to the table i really liked the element of the four different factions if you don't know what Divergent is, which I think most people probably do, but it basically follows um, a girl who lives in a world where there's these, I think it's five factions altogether, and um, you're kind of born into one, and then when you turn, I don't remember how old, like 11 maybe? Maybe it's older, I don't know. 14? I'm not sure I'm making out now. Um, when you turn a certain age, you have to then pick which one you want to be with, like for the rest of your life. So you can either choose to stay in the one that you were brought up in, or you can choose to change your allegiance to one of the others. And the main character picks a different, she defects basically to a different faction. Um, but there's some kind of thing about the fact that she might have like allegiances to all of them. Anyway, like I said, it's very complicated but actually I thought it was really well explained I really really enjoyed it and like I said I gave it four so I didn't give it five star because I think there was slight room for improvement in parts of it but to be honest with you I enjoyed it so it's all I can really ask for. The second book I gave a four star to was The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien which I'm sure everybody knows is the first book of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and um, I've only read the first one of this one as well strangely enough uh, because this is a long book and it's a long wordy book like it goes on for a while i've read the hobbit a couple of times and loved it um i've seen all the films of the hobbit and the lord of the rings and love them and so i thought this year do you know what i'm gonna give it a go and i actually read this with my sister and um yeah it was really really interesting um i love how different it is to the films like i think the film did a very good job of adapting it but obviously it was never going to be able to have everything in it and i think the book is just so wordy there's so much going on um uh, obviously it's J.R.R. Tolkien like he's kind of known for that like he's very very kind of descriptive language and it is very wordy but I also don't think it's completely alienating like I think that it's a, it's a book that once you've kind of read other books like because I read The Hobbit before it I found it easier to understand because I knew his kind of writing style um I gave it a four star because it was a little bit too wordy I think but I still enjoyed it a lot and um, yeah four stars is still a very good rating. Talking about very wordy authors the next one is 112263 by Stephen King and this is one of my favourites I think of Stephen King's. Um, this basically follows um, a man who goes back in time to try and stop the assassination of JFK and there's time travel in this which is not something I usually enjoy reading about I find it can be very bitty and all over the place but I adored this um I found that his way of he's obviously researched it a lot and to be honest with you I didn't know very much about JFK's assassination like I knew enough to kind of like I knew who did it and that's probably about it but I found out so much stuff and I felt like I really cared and all of the characters in this were just amazingly fleshed out. I didn't feel like there was anybody in it just for the sake of being in it. Um, it was quite like, it was just really interesting and I loved it. Um, I definitely would recommend this. I think this is one of Stephen King's like greatest books because it is just so well like padded out and well thought out. And I definitely think I will reread this when I get to this book in my Stephen King reads. Um, but yeah, I loved this one, gave it four stars. The next book is Deadly Embrace by Jackie Collins. And I have loved Jackie Collins' books since I was about 13. In fact, I might have said this story before, but the first book I remember reading, um, 
not like ever but one of the most but one of the books I kind of most remember reading um was I, can't, I think it was called Lovers and Players by Jackie Jackie Collins and I remember that I went into my mum's room and I pinched it off her bookshelf and I used to read it under the covers because I was scared I was going to get caught um and I just love her writing I don't you know it's a bit frivolous and it's a bit kind of risque and it's probably not the most like world ending brilliant books but oh my god do I enjoy reading them and this one was no different it follows Madison Castelli who finds out she's a journalist I think and she finds out that her dad is not who he said he was and so she runs away to New York to be with her best friends and while she's there in a restaurant her the restaurant gets taken over by these people who then take them hostage and it's about the kind of backstory of her and then obviously you find out more about what her dad like who her dad is and what he's done and um, obviously there's the hostage situation and to be honest with you I just found it all very very interesting I always really like the kind of Hollywood I say this when I did my book on hauls which I'll link below I said I didn't like reading about Hollywood in books now when I say that I don't include Jackie Collins in that because she just has this way of making it interesting to me and so I loved it um I gave it four stars because it's just not like groundbreaking enough to be a five star but I adored it anyway the next book was a book I listened to on audio and that was Little Black Lies by Sharon Bolton this was a book that I found really interesting it sat on the Falkland Islands and it basically follows um, three different perspectives now you have the main one who is Catelyn who her I think about like five years ago or something her two young boys are both killed um, when their car goes over a cliff because they're sat in the car playing and the car goes it's just the two of them in it and they both die um, it also follows the perspective of oh I can't was it Rachel I don't remember her name Rachel I think it is and she is was Catelyn's best friend who's not spoken that they've not spoken for five years because it was Rachel's car that the two boys were in when they were both killed and then there's also the perspective of Callum who is a veteran um in the Falkland Island Falkland War and he basically um has these blackouts and they all live on this island and then young children start to go missing and it's about kind of what happened what's going on alongside this already kind of building tension um of something happening um and anyway it's so it was so good I found the audiobook to be a little bit uninspiring in parts because one of the one of the people that did like the narrators um for Rachel's character spoke so slowly it was very annoying but other than that it was a brilliant book um I think the book is great I think the it was just the narrator that kind of put me off a bit but the book itself was fantastic and um yeah definitely a, a crime thriller that I enjoyed and I definitely would like to read more by Sharon Bolton in the future I'm not going to say this year because, because who knows but um yeah I really enjoyed it the next one was a bit of a kind of have a go I guess um book and this was The Children Act by Ian McEwan. Now I read Atonement by Ian McEwan a couple of years ago now and I loved that book. Um, I think I gave it five stars, I can't quite remember. And then I read the synopsis to The Children Act which basically it follows a judge who has to preside over a case where a young boy needs to have a life changing blood transfusion and he's refusing to have it because of his religion because he's a Jehovah's Witness and they don't um, agree or they don't what's the word they don't believe in blood transfusion transfusions is that the right way of saying it I'm not sure but um this was very legal like a legal based book and I did law at university and so it was really up my street in fact I specialized um at university in child law and like family law and so this was actually something that I re was really very much drawn to and I loved it it was a brilliant book um there was the reason I didn't give it five stars was because there was a very inappropriate relationship in this book that I'm not going to go into but I found it very uncomfortable however the rest of the book was very interesting the legal side of it was fascinating and I'm really really glad I read this so I would like to definitely continue reading this type of book these kind of like 
legal based book so please let me know if you have any recommendations because it's one of my favourite things and um, yeah I'd like to read more. Next up is The Missing by C.L. Taylor which is another thriller kind of book and to be honest I've read quite a lot of these this year and they really just interest me so much but this follows a woman whose son went missing um, a couple of years before and there's been no leads and they don't know where he is and then this, when this book is set they're about to have a press conference to kind of remind people about it and then something happens at the press conference that kind of changes everything and the mother then is trying to find out what's going on she thinks she's got a lead and um it's about like the missing persons case i did kind of figure out what happened just before it actually happened but to be honest with you i was so like on the line that i don't think it really counted um this really surprised me this book and actually it surprised me how much i enjoyed it and i'm really glad that i've got two more um books by uh, cl taylor on my shelves i've got the accident and i've got the lie so i can't wait to read those because I'm very excited. Next up is a massive childhood throwback for me and that is The Princess Diaries by Meg Cabot which is the first book in the Princess Diaries series. I don't know how many are in this now, I think there's like 12 or something and I do want to continue reading them because I read these like I said when I was probably like 12 or 13 and I loved them and I love the films, I think they're just amazing and um, yeah this, this is just one of those books that's just very like happy and just brings me a lot of like good memories and also what I love about this it's one of the first books I read as a kid that had like a really smart person in it and it wasn't like vilified like I often find that when you watch like or see you read books or I, when I was younger anyway anyway I read like books that were kind of like the smart geeky one was always like cast out nobody like didn't have any friends kind of thing and this is the exact opposite so I love that for that reason um yeah and again like I said it has to be a four stars because I just loved it so much. Next up is another thriller and that is The Abortionist's Daughter by Elizabeth Hyde and I've talked about this book quite a lot on this channel um, because I did love it so much. It basically follows a woman who is an abortionist doctor and she is found dead in her hot tub and um, on the day that she died she had many arguments with both she had an argument with both her daughter and with her husband separately and so obviously both of them are now kind of um under like suspicion in some ways and then on top of that um obviously she has the kind of anti-abortion people that have been sending her threats and things and this book was a it was a lot about abortion like there was obviously lots of conversation about it because it was what the main character did for a job and there was potentially um that was where she was killed potentially and I just felt like it's such an important topic that needs to be talked about more and I loved this book for the reason that it just brought up so many interesting points and I did feel like it wasn't biased it wasn't like against one side or the other I think both sides kind of got their say and I do think that's really important I think it needs to be talked about more and um and the mystery in this was really good as well um I can't remember if I realized who did it before I read it the ending but either way I love the ending anyway um, and it made sense it was like believable a lot of the time when I read thrillers sometimes I think the person that did it would never have actually done that but this was really really believable so yeah love this next up is Asking For It by Louise O'Neill which was one of the most important books that I think that I read this year and this is a book it was a subject that I've never really thought about too much before until I read this and now I think it's definitely something that we should talk about more um, basically this is about a girl who goes to a party and she gets drunk and um she ends up being sexually assaulted or raped i can't to be honest with you i just can't remember which way it was phrased but she gets sexually assaulted or raped um by three or four guys um who are kind of like the football players and they're sort of like well known and basically the town don't believe her when she says that this is what happened and a lot of them said like oh that's just what boys do and kind of like she was asking for it because she went to a party and got drunk and it's about her reaction to this it's about the town's reaction to it it's about the legal reaction to it and it's one of those things that I think happens a lot in today's society like somebody is sexually assaulted or raped or 
has comments made about them and it's a case of well they were drunk and went out and got drunk they wore a short skirt they wore revealing clothes or whatever and it's kind of like well, it doesn't give anybody the right to do these things or like make comments or catcall or anything and it's something that I definitely think about more since I've read it because I think it's one of those stories that kind of stuck with me massively and um, yeah I definitely think Louise O'Neill did an amazing job at kind of bringing this to the limelight because like I said I'd never really thought about it before this um, but I'm really glad I read it and um, I definitely think it's important to read so definitely give it a read if it sounds like something that you might be interested in. Then up next I have Remember Me by Sophie Kinsella. Now when I was younger I read a lot of Sophie Kinsella's Shopaholic series um, and this was a standalone that was not part of that series and I love that idea. I think that Sophie Kinsella's writing is fantastic and I just want to read all of her books basically. But this follows, this follows a woman who is kind of, she's in a job that she doesn't particularly love. She has friends but nobody particularly special. She doesn't have a boyfriend. She thinks she's quite ugly. And then one day something happens and she wakes up in hospital with no memory and she those friends are no longer talking to her she has this man who comes into her room and says he's her husband and she looks in the mirror and she thinks she's very attractive now and she doesn't really understand what's happened she lives in this massive house with this guy she's like the head of the company that she used to work for and she just doesn't remember anything and like the reason her friends aren't talking to her is because they've kind of um apparently she's just a horrible person and that she's been horrible to them and they obviously don't want to talk to her because of that and it's about her sort of trying to marry the two lives up and trying to figure out what's going on and how she can kind of overcome these problems because she just doesn't know what's happening and she doesn't really understand what she's supposed to do about it and then this strange man comes along and says like I know what's happened like I get it and I loved this like I said, I love Sophie Kinsella's writing. And this, I was like hooked on this book. I really wanted to know what had happened. I spent the whole book like just wanting to read more. I wanted to continue. Um, if I had to put the book down, I was like gutted because I just wanted to find out what happened. So this is one of those books that I read really quickly. And I'm really glad I read it because it was fantastic. Next up, I have the next Stephen King book I read, which was Under the Dome. And this book, I loved it. Under the Dome has some sort of similarities to Gone by Michael Grant which I talked about in my December no January wrap up so I'll link that below um but basically Under the Dome follows a town where suddenly this dome appears over the top of it and it means that people can't get out and people can't get in and um it's about the kind of political intrigue of the town and kind of who's now in charge and how they're going to get food because obviously nothing can get in or out um and things start happening they've got no electricity and there's just little things that start happening and they're getting more and more out of control and i loved it it was again it's one of those books it was such a long book it was like a thousand and something pages i think but it was so interesting and i just think stephen king does an amazing job at just researching and like every little detail he knows the answer to and he just puts it into his books and I found that to be fa like fascinating and um yeah I just want to read more of his writing again this is one I will reread when I get to that in my Stephen King books book reads I'm reading them in order so when I get to that one I will probably reread it because I did love it so much but it was fantastic and I can't wait to read more Stephen King to be honest. The next one I read um, was Life As We Knew It by Susan Beth Pfeffer. I think I'm saying that right. Um, and this is the first in the series I think. Um, but actually since I talked about this in my November wrap up my boyfriend now really wants to read this book and I can't wait for him to do that because I want to talk about it with him um, and I think he'll really like it. But it basically follows a world where um, this town, you know, this world of people is just very excited about this meteor that's going to go past the earth and they're going to get to see it and they're really excited about that however they all stand outside and watch it and then it hits the moon and all hell breaks loose um obviously things start to happen the weather massively changes there's tsunamis and earthquakes and tidal waves and it's just a bit mad and things start happening like i said and they're not really sure what's going on people start getting ill people start dying and it's literally like what is going to happen and 
I loved it. I think it was really, really interesting. Again, it's not a dystopian that I had read before. It wasn't something that kind of reminded me of something else, if that makes sense. Like it was its own story. It really stood on its own two feet and I loved this. Um, I think that possibly it could have been longer. I think it was only like 300 pages and for me, like there were bits of it that I wanted to hear more about and possibly that's kind of why it's a series like there'll probably be more information in the other books in the series but when I read it I really wanted to read more so um that's why I gave it four stars not five but I definitely loved this then I have The Giver by Lois Lowry which sort of has some similarities to Divergent in my eyes um but I much I don't know if I preferred The Giver but I think it was better written I think Divergent probably the story is more interesting in some aspects but The Giver to me was written better and um, I don't really know how to explain too much about what it's about but it's basically about this world where everything is regulated so um, you know when you turn five you might get a bike and when you turn like everybody gets the same and when you turn 11 I think it is again this could be 14 I think I'm unsure when you turn a certain age you get given a job and you then stay in that job and you do that for however long and um, the main character in this gets given the job of gi the giver he is working under the current giver there's only one of them and the, the current one is teaching him everything so that he can take over from them and this was just really interesting um again this is a dystopian world that was completely original and new to me and um i'd heard amazing things from cc from problems of a book nerd whose channel i'll link below um but this is like one of her favorite books of all time i think and i just found this to be really really interesting and i loved it and i just thought it was really well written so um for a middle grade i gave it a four star which is not something i usually do so definitely check this one out because i think that you'll like it next up is grave mercy by robin lefevers lefevers how do you say that i don't know and this is the first book in the his fair assassin series um i think again this might be a trilogy i can't remember but this is a book that i would not normally have picked but i think i saw a video and i can't think who it was was talking about it but somebody mentioned it and it's they really sold it to me and i read this not really expecting very much but i got a lot more than i expected this follows ismay who has been trained by the god of death to be an assassin and she is sent by um this kind of the court that she um what lives in to Brittany to basically murder somebody like she's going to be an assassin however the person that she is kind of tasked with killing is actually the guy who she's just fallen in love with and it's kind of about the intrigues of court and the it's just very difficult for me to explain it kind of follows the kind of betrayals and the traitors and the different characters that make up the court and it's like queens and kings and i loved it like it was one of those books that i did definitely didn't have any expectations but i'm so glad i read it because it was fantastic and it definitely kind of sold this series to me and i think that i will continue reading it the next book on this list is Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney and this is another kind of psychological thriller type thing. This one I, I'm not sure if I'd give it a four star now. I think thinking about it is probably more like a three but anyway it's on this list. I've already filmed the three stars, I'm not going to start again. <laughs> anyway, this follows a main character who wakes up in a coma but she is unable to express anything like she's kind of locked in I guess is that what they call it locked in syndrome where she knows what's going on around her she can hear people she can see people but she can't like it, she can't express herself she can't speak she can't um like do anything she can't move and she it says on the back like there are three things you must know about me my name is okay, Amber her name's Amber the second one was my husband doesn't love me anymore and the third one was sometimes I lie and basically her husband who she knows is there with her parents she thinks he's got something to do with the reason why she's in a coma because she gets these flashbacks and she kind of can't really remember what caused the coma um, and why she's in the coma in the first place and um so this story is actually told in three different perspectives you get amber while she's in a coma you get her a week before this all happens and the kind of lead up to it and there's also some childhood diaries um there's like extracts of that from this and it builds up this picture of kind of everything and i'll be honest with you did not see any of it coming it massively massively shocked me and i remember reading it thinking 
have I read that right? Like, is that actually what happened? And it, it makes sense now, but my God, at the time, it was a roller coaster of emotions. It was absolutely all over the place in my eyes. And I was like, what the hell is going on? But I really, really, really liked it. And actually now I think about it, I would give it a four star because it really gave me that kind of sense of like, wow, I did not see that coming. So definitely a recommend if you enjoy thrillers and you like that kind of like shock factor. The next one is The Titan's Curse by Rick Ryden, which is the third book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. I obviously can't go into this too much because it is the third book in a five book series six book series i think it's five books oh i'm not sure actually now i'm saying that anyway either way um i like the percy jackson series i think um it's got a sense of humor to it which i really enjoy i really want to read more of rick ryden's books but i kind of want to, need to finish the percy jackson series before i do that so i need to get on with that like and read some more soon um i think the titan's curse was probably possibly my favorite of the series so far trying to remember I know the first one I think I gave three stars I can't remember about the second but I definitely think the Titan's Curse was my favorite one so far um I just think it had more like connection between the characters because obviously you know them better and it can only get better from there so I'm really looking forward to reading the fourth one um yeah it's definitely one um I'm going to be reading hopefully soon but again I would not like to say it because I've got so many books that I'm saying like oh hopefully I'll read that really soon so um yeah hopefully it is one that I get to sometime in the near future then i have a book that made me cry like a small child and then wouldn't let me go uh this is when breath becomes air by paul kalanithi and this is actually the reason why it got me so upset was because it's based on a true story in fact it's written from the perspective of paul kalanithi who basically is a surgeon he was he trained for 10 years to be a surgeon and then he gets diagnosed with aggressive lung cancer and um it kills him um it's not a spoiler it's written in the thing but basically he actually dies before he can finish writing the book and his wife finishes and she writes like an epilogue at the end um it's epilogue i don't know at the bit at the end and um it's just it basically explores how he feels as a doctor becoming a patient and the kind of conflict that he feels and what life means to him and obviously knowing that he's going to die at some point soon and then they, he has they have a child and so it's kind of him coming to terms with the fact that he's not going to see her grow up and he's not going to be able to experience all the things that he wants to experience and honestly the way this was written was so beautiful and I honestly think that Paul Kalanithi was taken way too quickly because I feel like he could have done so so much and um, for that I'm very upset about it but it did make me cry because it is so well written and I just loved it um, but it is one of those books that I feel like you have to be in the mood to watch to read even like you have to be in the mood to read because I think that you would it, it could lose a lot on certain people if you weren't in the kind of right space for it at the right time we're on to the last three for this video I promise <laughs> the next book is a kind of fluffy romance book I guess you could say it's kind of like a summer romantic book but it's called Summer Boys and it's by Hayley Abbott and it's the first book in the Summer Boys series um I read this on a whim I literally went on to Wikipedia and searched for YA authors like a, a list of them and this was one of the first ones that came up and I thought you know what I'm just going to try a different author because I just wanted to try somebody different and try something a bit you know something that I'd not heard anyone talk about before and I haven't heard anyone talk about this book and this basically follows three cousins who all spend the summer at this beach house and it follows it follows the first one is Ella and she is kind of sassy and a bit sort of um very very confident in herself and she starts to fall for this older boy um without realizing that that older boy is actually her sister's boyfriend and awkward things happen from there um then you have the second one who is beth and beth starts Beth's a bit more shy and reserved but she falls for or is falling for her best guy friend um named george and she's kind of like unsure what to do about that um and she gets jealous whenever george kind of talks about other girls and it's something that she's not experienced before but something it suddenly happens and she doesn't really know where to go with it 
And then you have the last one, which is Jamie. And the summer before, Jamie had a kind of summer romance with this boy. And now she's kind of being, she's kind of getting her heart broken because he's not interested this summer. And um, she's not really sure what to do about that either. And it's kind of the three of them trying to navigate first love, I guess. And um, yeah, it just, it's kind of one of those books that really reminds me of childhood and of the things that happened and when you think that you're in love, but you're really not. And um, yeah, it, it's brilliant. I really enjoyed this. And um, I think if that's the type of book that you wanna read, definitely pick this one up because it's amazing. The next one I have, um, a lot of people think is quite controversial, I think, but I really enjoyed it. And that is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. This is a book about a, I believe Chinese village. I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but basically it follows this girl who lives in this village where they each have their own group and she's part of the like artists and um, they live up a mountain and basically they have no way of getting food so they have an agreement with the town at the bottom of the mountain that they will send down mining supplies because they have access to a mine they will send down like diamonds and things and gold and um, if the town at the bottom of the mountain sends up food and then the town at the bottom of the mountain stops they stop sending so much they kind of they're skimping out basically and obviously there's not nothing the village can do because they're starving um basically the difference about this part of the town or this village should i say is that everybody in the village is deaf and so hence soundless but then people start to go blind as well and that's the problem however instead of going blind our main character gets her hearing back and then she then uses that to try and go get down with um the town at the bottom and kind of figure out what's going on and why they're doing this to them and i know a lot of people have problems with the um ethnicity um side of things which i cannot comment on myself because i've no experience with that and i don't know how good or bad representation it is however the other thing people talk about and they have negative things with is the um representation of deafness in this now i am half deaf so although i can't fully obviously talk about this in terms of like being fully um able to hear or not hear um i have part of this like i do have part of this sort of thing and to me this was not bad representation i didn't think it was villainizing or idolizing the idea of being deaf um i have no problem with the representation in fact i think it was very respectfully done personally that's an opinion that's i think quite a negative opinion but that's kind of where i'm coming from on it and i feel like i have some kind of like understanding of it anyway either way this is a book that I would recommend you read. It's a good fantasy book. It's something that um, I think was very well written. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading more by Rochelle Mead. I haven't read the Vampire Academy series, so hopefully that's something I will read fairly soon. But again, I'm not gonna go ahead and say it's gonna be very soon. And the last book, I'm not gonna talk about too much, but again, I listened to this one on audiobook, and this is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. And this is the first book in the Game of Thrones series i think there's loads of them now i would like to say first that i've never seen a single episode of game of thrones and so my only experience of game of thrones is the book and i loved the book i thought it was really well done i did think there was a lot of characters and i think that's something that george rr R. martin has a lot of experience with um i read a short story of his from a book called rogues which i read in january which again i'm linking that below anyway but I did not enjoy his short story because I felt like there was way too many characters in it for a short story. However, for a full novel, I can understand why he does that. And I did enjoy this book a lot. I think that listening to it on audiobook was actually much better for me and more helpful because it just made more sense, you know? Like there was more, it was slightly slower and it wasn't quite as like intense. Um, but I would definitely recommend this and I would like to read more of the ser in the series but I probably will listen to them on audiobook. So anyway guys, that is my 
four star reviews of 2017 part one um that was 21 books so i hope this wasn't too long but if it was i can only apologize there will be a second part coming very very soon um and i hope that you like this video let me know which was your favorite book that i've mentioned in this video and tell me what your favorite four star review was of 2017 i'm always interested to know and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you in my next one bye guys